Well, hey guys, all of my favorite llamas and llamaettes, I'm back. We've got gear pack, courtesy of Jason, who is strongly thinking about ending this. It's not blood on my hands, it's red paint, by the way, because I've been working on this. So anyway, we've got gear pack, courtesy of Jason. And Jason's uh, pretty much almost had it with this subscription, and I think a lot of us agree with him. So we're going to negotiate what's next. But this is the first October box to arrive, so at least it's got that going for it. So this is the gear box, or sorry, gear pack ultimate. And before we unbox it, um, I'd like to thank today's sponsor. Ladies, gents, llamas, if you haven't already, go check out Doc P's Tactics Talk. It's a great channel. I highly endorse it. For those of you who like the military content, it's a, something I'm working really hard on, presenting some really cool information in a new, fun, exciting way, but still with all the pomp, circumstance, and arrogance of an actual United States Air Force Weapons School graduate. So, if you want real info, real details, and, you know, the unvarnished truth, not just some online, I've got an agenda opinion, come check it out, ask questions that you want answered about military gear, military equipment, military procedures and tactics, and we'll have a good old time. So thank you, Doc P's Tactics Talk, for sponsoring this episode. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got in the October 2021. Did I just say 2021? What the fuck is wrong with me? 2023, Gear Pack Ultimate box. Uh, for anybody who's uh, wondering, this is the Spider Co., um, God, what is this? Uh, this is the salt too, an LC200N. Great knife, great knife, very corrosion resistant knife. I really like it. So, no, oh, this is, uh, box 86, prepared. And um, boy, is that just such a, that could go anywhere. That could mean anything. What a theme, prepared. So just real quick as we go, um, they always tell you that this is prices based on MSRP in US dollars. They do this specifically because this is one of the few boxes that has absolutely no problem sending to Canada. And I believe it's actually a Canadian based company now that I think about it. So that's why they specify US dollars. But like every other multi level subscription, um, you start with a basic, basic plus, advanced, and ultimate, you know, and like as you order a higher level, it builds off that. So uh, Jason gets us the ultimate box to look at. So that means we get ultimate and everything that comes before it. If you only subscribe to say the basic plus, for example, you get everything that's in the basic plus and the basic. So there we go. We'll go over everything in the order on the card and talk about their values as we go. Gear pack apparel available now. I would never wear anything with their stuff on it, but if you're curious, if you want, you can go ahead and scan that. There you go. So we've got one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but these might count as one item. Eleven. Eleven items. All right. Many of these we've seen in other boxes before, other companies. So not necessarily a bad thing, but we'll see. So, oh good, wet, cold ground, love sitting on it. So we'll start with the basic box. The basic box will cost you $19.99. They say the total value there is $28.97. Remember, MSRP in US dollars. We're gonna start with the gear pack task, tactical, uh, ooh, see, my brain doesn't even wanna pronounce that fucking word. Tactical visor organizer. I have seen these I have seen these sold for a dollar. I mean, I've seen them sold for much more. So this goes in your car. This goes on your on your sun visor in your car. And normally these are kind of elasticy. Okay. So picture your you know driver's seat, the flip down visor. This goes on it, and then you cinch this up and hold on there. And so then when you fold it down, you have all of this. I guess Velcro for morale patches there. And this is not unheard of. So I wish I, I don't have a, a picture of it. I'll try to get a picture of it. But what we used to do military wise was um, some people would like, as you switch from unit to unit, sometimes your morale bat, your morale tag, your so you'd get an official 
uniform, like a nameplate, whether it's on your flight suit or your vest, uh, your IBE or or whatever that is. Um, IBA, sorry. IBA and LBE, sometimes they're the same thing. Um, you, you, as you go from unit to unit, they have different ones. Um, it's not the exact same thing. Like, you know, it's, how do I describe it? You guys have seen it on my wall, on my patch panel. Like different units have different colors and different uh, maybe mascots or whatever. So some people will take their old ones and take the Velcro side and stick it up on the roof of the car or on the visor. So anyway, my point is, you know, or, or different patches that mean something to them. So my point is it's not unheard of to have a morale patch area there. Okay, so, but you can put some important documents in there, I guess, if you want or whatever. And then some Molly compatible PALS webbing. I, I would probably never use this though. This is more tactical than tactical. And uh, they say it costs $13.99. I'm sure there's somebody that's just salivating over this right now and can't wait. Maybe what would be cool is these, you could put like uh, an escape tool, like some kind of window breaking, um, you know, seatbelt cutting thing in there. But, oh, and then you can, I guess you can keep your like your documents in there, your insurance, registration, stuff like that. I don't know, whatever. Uh, this would be a man. Uh, some, it might be useful. It's not thrilling me. Okay, moving on. Get out wrist strap with tungsten carbide bead. $7.99. We've seen, I think Battlebox gave us something similar. So it's a it's an elastic bracelet. And it you can use this as a as a uh, window breaker. Now, the funny thing is I've messed with these and I, I am willing I am willing to own it up to I am not talented. I'm not gonna I've seen these work in videos, but every time I try to use it, I end up snapping it on myself. Um, so you can use the the elastic and then snap it on a window and break like say a car window to escape. Um, I guess you can with it on you just hit in the right spot. I don't know, but the way I've seen them used is you use the elastic and you snap it against the window. I always hit myself with the damn thing. So like I said, I'm totally willing to accept the fact that it's just me being not talented enough to use it because I have seen them work. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to wear it. I might keep it in the car somewhere like in this thing. But the truth is, if you're going to keep it in the car somewhere, there are better, more effective, um, easier to use window breaking devices like the like this the um spring loaded punch and things like that but um remove from your wrist loop the strap around your thumb and forefinger place the tongues to beat against the window yeah um so am i supposed to use it like a gun like a like a rubber band i don't know um 7.99 uh, i don't know again to me this is kind of meh but then again if i was dying if i was in a car and it was like filling with water and i needed to escape the car was on fire and i couldn't open the door I guess I would, uh, all of a sudden this would become, a, I love it. But like I said, there are just, to me, many other things. I wouldn't wear it. I just wouldn't wear it, is my point. And then somebody's gonna say, well, what if you're riding in your friend's car? I still would, I don't know. I just, I think there are other options that I like better, that's all I'm saying. I don't know, there are arguments to be made for it, but meh. And then finally, Night Eyes, 25 pound, S beaner double coated double gated carabiner. So I guess they are two. So the little one uh, is in the basic box. These things are very useful. I use them all the time actually for various things. Uh, what do they say? Six ninety nine. I think that's kind of about what you pay for them. This, yeah, lots of uses. Um, tactical, tactical, and EDC type stuff. Camping, um, just hiking, carrying gear, hanging stuff up in a garage or in the shed or whatever. This I will never complain about getting. I like this. This is uh, this is very very useful. So I like this. This goes and I like it. So in this basic box for nineteen ninety nine, we've got two meh, and we've got I like it. And that's where we're at. All right. So moving into the basic plus, the total basic plus remember includes these will cost you thirty nine ninety nine. They say the total value jumps up to fifty ninety five. So it comes with a blade, bladeio, 
ceramic folding knife with nylon pouch. I don't trust this thing at all, just from looking at the uh, the package. They're trying to make it out to be all French and stuff. Show me this is made in China somewhere. Um, Bladio, ceramic folding knife with pouch. Ceramic knives, we've talked about before. I have a video about testing ceramic versus steel way back when. Ceramic knives are excellent in their element for what they are for. <clears throat> they're excellent slicing, slicing knives. They're terrible chopping knives. They're great because they don't conduct electricity. Um, it says right here, meats without bones. Yeah, because um, while ceramic will stay sharp for a very long time, will hold its edge much longer than a comparable steel, they are very brittle. And they will chip and they will break if not treated very properly. So you have your one ceramic edge. And sharpening them is a real bitch if you need to. So plastic scales. And it also has a steel blade. So, you know, at the at the at the one on the one hand, somebody somebody might say, well, what's the point of a ceramic knife if it has steel anyway? Number one. You're not sneaking ceramic past a metal detector. Not this one, either, especially because, as you can see, it has steel all in the construction. However, I will tell you that they have learned from experience, and all ceramic knives are made with a trace element, just enough of a um, trace amount of, of ferrite materials so that it will set off a metal detector. Yeah, that whole trick was it outlived itself already. Uh, they figured that out. Um, so most ceramic knives will set off a metal detector anyway. Just FYI, hate for you guys to go to jail for not knowing. But we've got a very small steel blade. I have no idea what kind of steel this is. And uh, even though this has instructions in English, French, and German, it says nothing. Does not say at all where this knife is made. The sheath, by the way, is not bad. It's got a little elasticiness. Um, you can, does that unbutton? Oh no, that's a rivet. That is not unbuttoning. Okay, it looks like it would snap, but it's not a snap. It's, it is a snap, I, I lied. It snaps. Um, you could also use your night eyes beaner to clip it in place, but it's in, I mean, it holds this securely. And slip joint construction, well, a friction folder really. Not so much slip joint, but it holds that nice and securely, so that's good. I just, I can't find anything about the steel or whatever right now, so I'm not going to particularly worry about it. However, comma, guess what time it is? It is new cut money package time. That, that's what time it is, in case you haven't figured that out. So, not bad. And now our steel side. Yeah. Okay. We got to be little and gentle with it because it's a little guy. It's a little blade. And in the world of the P cord, not bad. I mean, not bad. I'm curious about this. Hmm. Effort effort. Now that could just be the leverage on the knife um, or the fact that a ceramic blade usually, I mean, let's face it, it's usually not, it's usually not sharpened to the actual razor's edge that a steel blade is because, again, because of the fragility of the ceramic material. They won't make it as fine an edge because it's so, like when you make it so finely honed, it is so prone to chipping. I realize I'm not holding this on camera very much and I apologize. It is so prone to chipping. Um, so it is usually not as finely um, microscopically honed to as, as fine a razor's edge as you would find steel. And that's just the way they do it. Let's see. A little bit more effort than I wanted, but I think that has to do with the size of the blade. I am not even going to try to do a pull through on this. It's just going to be, it's the leverage size of the knife is going to make it very hard. But the blade is finished, is finished nicely, even though the bevels are a little bit uneven. It's, it's finished nicely. I don't know. I mean, that's like a wood carving size blade. That's so little. So little. Um, but it is interesting. I thought it was going to be a lot chintzier feeling 
when I got my hands on it. It actually has a nice feel. There's no play there at all. Interesting. You know what? I actually do like this. Uh, I need to spend more time with it. I thought I would hate it. I really thought it was going to be a cheap, crap-feeling kind of thing. But it's not bad. It's not bad. Not too bad. Well, maybe we'll follow up if I find something that we really need to cover up, like, because it suddenly sucks. But there we go. So the value on that is $13.99. Not too bad. Next, we've got a professional universal sharpener. I already hate it. Already hate it. Just looking at it. Oh, boy. So it looks like you've got a fixed angle there for knives, a fixed angle for scissors, and then this dinky little tiny ceramic rod. The handle is uncomfortable. <laughs> it cuts into your thumb right there. I mean, you might be able to sand this down a little bit. Um, but I, so I hate these fixed angle sharpeners, number one, because what if your knife is not on that angle? Number one. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they, they're on springs or anything. It looks like they're just screwed in. And yeah, they don't adjust at all for the angle of, of your blade. So basically, you put your blade in there and you hope that it's the right angle. And if it's not, you're going to screw your edge up flat out. That's why I hate these things so much. Um, second, I, you, you, you're, this ceramic rod might be might be great. I, number one, I doubt it goes all the way down this, the length of this. But number two, it, you know, it for anything, I guess they planned it for the size of this because it's not much good for a blade larger than this. Uh, I hate these things. These things are some of the worst sharpening tools in the world and I hate you and go away. So there we go. So that was the basic plus. One item that I think has some potential, we're going to look into it, I like it, and one that I absolutely hate. The advanced box, putting together the basic and the basic plus. We're going to move into uh, total cost of $79.99 with a total value, MSRP, $100.87. We're going to start with the Off-Grid Tools Survivor LED Headlamp. Uh, Off-Grid Tools, not the same thing as Off-Grid Knives, totally separate. Uh, Off-Grid Tools has some decent things, and I've seen some that are just kind of stunky by Off-Grid. Um, I'm starting to wonder how many headlamps we realistically need, and I'm telling you, I can't place it right now. I've, we've, we've gotten this exact lamp branded by somebody else, maybe twice, with two different names on it. Um, we absolutely have seen this lamp. This headlamp. Um, this exact thing. I just, I can't remember. We've seen it at least twice. I think, oh, I'm bad at this. You guys are much better at this than I am. I think we might have seen something like this in Club Tack long ago. We might have gotten something like this in Battle Box, Barrel and Blade, I don't know. But, let's see. Can you get more off-brand than that? Probably. Let's not. So, wait. Do we have O-rings? We have a very tiny O-ring in there. So at least we've got that going for us. One click gives us these red LEDs. I'm, I'm, yeah, I know it's daylight out here, but, like, they don't do anything. So look, one click does nothing, second click does nothing, third click turns them off. So I'm going to hold it down now, see what happens. Nothing. Fantastic, Ben. It says it has four light modes. I can't get it to do anything else besides this. Hold it down. So I'd say that this one is broken. There's no other button. There's, uh, we got instructions? Nope, nope. Had some batteries. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing. This, this thing sucks. Um. Don't like it. I didn't like it before I looked at it. I didn't like it once we put stuff in it and I don't like it now. 
Um, all right, cheap crap. Next, the Gerber Devour Multi-Fork with six function multi-tool. By the way, that headlamp, $14.99 is their value. This is a six function multi-tool. This is not just a fork. Guarantee a bottle opener is a, is a tool on the six function multi-tool. I actually haven't seen this. So I'm kind of excited to see this little guy right here. So let's see. So is this aluminum? It's less than an ounce. Textured grip, corrosion resistant. Um, let's see, unstoppable, all right. Six function multi-tool. Mounts to back, keeps fork elevated. Oh, look at that, keeps your fork off the dirty ground. That's not bad. Uh, I'm willing to bet since the actual price on this is $19.99, it's aluminum, not titanium. I'm not surprised, I'm not complaining. Aluminum is, you know, it's, it's pretty standard. So let's see how this works. How does this mount? How does this unmount? How does this mounting go? Does it just, it just pops off the rubber over here. All right, so you have your spork, right? And um, um, is this, this is just, is this one of the tools? Is this just a spork? Um, deep basin spoon, dual flat cut scrape edges, the, the long time fork, they really go out of their way to try to fancy up a goddamn spork. Come on. Anyway, all right, it's angled nicely though, especially considering getting deep into like um, uh, dehydrated food containers and everything that you mix up. So not bad, not a bad design for the for the spoon. And it is like air light, so there we go. Here is our multi-tool. So this is a serrated package opener, see that? So I guess like getting into um, box cutting or, and cause this is a little bit sharp right here. So this is the can opener area. See this, like I have a video on how to use, on how to do that, on how to use those things, but this could like open up packages as well. So not bad. Um, notice not a bottle, wait a minute, not a bottle opener? Oh, I spoke too soon. Uh, it was right, bottle opener, bottle opener. Uh, flathead driver, small, okay. Flathead driver, large. I guess the side is the flathead driver large, is flathead driver small. Got a pry bar, um, whatever. It's not bad though. If you think if you think about it in terms of for what it is, for an eating tool, um, you've got your spoon, you can open a can of food, you can use this to cut open a can, like a package of food, bottle opener, fine, sure. Um, you know, and then what I, what I do like is that when this pops on, it, and it just pops on. It does keep your spoon off the ground. It's, it's not bad. Um, what are they? What are they? Nineteen ninety nine. I guarantee you can find this for nine ninety nine somewhere. This is something I would buy. This is not bad. I like this. And it being in aluminum, or it could be zinc. Now that I think about it, which means you couldn't blowtorch anno it. It would melt. But you could do other stuff with it. I, I like it. This I like. This is this is a decent item. It being Gerber, it probably is overpriced for what you're getting, but I'm sure we can find it for less than what's on the card. Now we have the other Night Eyes Beaner, 75 pound S Beaner, um, $7.99. Again, just like the little one, I would gladly pay for these things. I should have I should have said it before, I actually used one of these uh, downrange. I would clip one of these to uh, a, an empty loop on my uh, body armor, and then I would just clip my, my uh, K-pop, my Kevlar, my helmet, the helmet strap to the other side of this so that I you'd never want to just let it lay it on the ground because you know it's dirty and filthy. Um, but you also would want to have to carry it when you got a chance to not have it on because not having your Kevlar on is golden. Uh, so you know you just clip it onto that and that would hold it off the ground and hands free and stuff like that. It's just one use. These things are great. So I love this too. Awesome. And then finally the Fisher Extreme Conditions Retractable Space Pen. $6.95. So I've never seen a Fisher come in this kind of packaging, but okay. I've also never seen this model of the Fisher Space Pen. I think we all know the Fisher Space Pen. It has uh, nitrogen pressurized ink cartridges so that you can, this looks so government issued. 
This looks like a Skillcraft pen that you'd find on like the shelf in supply in any government office. Um, this has got to be the cheapest Fisher Space pen I've ever seen. At the same time, six ninety five. I've never seen a, a Fisher Space Pen for that cheap in my life, so I can't complain. But the whole point is, that because it's pressurized ink, they will write on anything. They will write upside down. They will write underwater. They will write on grease. They will look. See, I can write. Look, I'm going to write. See, I'm going to write an upside down poop. You write upside down. That's the whole thing about Fisher Space Pens. What I'm not a big fan about this one is number one, it's very flimsy. It's very long and skinny, and what an odd place for the clip, but it's still a Fisher Space Pen, so. Um, and it's super light as well. And it's fine point, I like fine point writing. This one's sort of torn between meh and like it. Um, it's always good to have another one of those, you know, space pens, but what a lame ass model. Eh, yeah, that'll go in meh, okay. And that is everything in the advanced box, which brings the total value supposedly to $100.87 MSRP. Let's look in the ultimate, which costs $119.99, which brings our total value to $149.81, starting with the Gerber Exo Mod Saw with Snap Sheath System. So they got a good deal from Gerber this month, I see. Ooh, ergonomic grip. No, not. Not at all. Very, very skinny. I mean, I guess the whole point is to be, it's a Paxo, it's supposed to be lightweight, and it's XO. For their XO series, fine. But it's, it's very lightweight, and, um, which is good, but lots of, lots of right angle edges, which just bite into your hand. Now again, again, we can solve this problem with a Dremel or even sandpaper or a file and just round those over and make them more comfortable. But because it's so skinny, and I, I will say again, I recognize it's supposed to be lightweight and slim profile and all that stuff, but because it is so skinny, it's just not a very comfortable thing to hold. Especially, I imagine, over over long period of time doing work with it, it would really build up some hot spots. But we'll forgive that because it is Exomod pack saw, supposed to be lightweight and all that stuff. Um, glass filled polypropylene. So another way to say plastic. Awesome. Okay. Uh, 4116 stainless steel for the blade. Hey, they're actually telling us what it is. That is awesome. Usually they don't do that. All right, so let's talk about this blade seal for a minute. Uh, you may be familiar with 4116. You may know it as 1.4116. It's a German made steel. Um, Victorinox has used it a bit. Um, Buck has used it a little bit. So pros and cons, very tough steel, very corrosion resistant. Edge retention is a bit of a problem with it. In terms of being a saw blade, I don't know how that works out. Um, I get the toughness though, corrosion resistance, great for a pack saw. Um, I don't know, it's, we're not using it as a traditional blade, so I don't know how the edge retention factor plays into saw teeth. Honestly, I don't know. A little bit out of my wheelhouse. Maybe somebody out there can fill us in a little bit and give us kind of um, a more saw-centric opinion on that. But in general, 4116, it's not real premium, but it's also not bottom of the barrel. It actually it actually has properties that, that stand it, um, above 420 and, and 440 a little bit um, in some ways. It performs roughly, and this is roughly similar to like a 420HC. So. Um, not surprised to see Gerber using it because Gerber has done a lot with 420HC. A little bit of flex in the blade, which is good for a saw. That's Pancakes, the dog next door. Pancakes thinks he's a lot bigger than he is. Um, so it's not bad. It's going to take you a little while to get through a larger piece of wood. But clean cut, and again, if I was going to go through this whole thing, it's going to take a little bit. Um, but if you got a comfortable position and you just started going. Sorry guys about pancakes. We love pancakes. <laughs> yeah, if you got in a comfortable position and just started going, it would be 
Yeah, not bad. Certainly not a silky saw though. Great retention on the sheath though there. Uh, it's got the little notch and you see that you can really feel that positive snap. Interesting sheath. I don't know, a little limited on where you can put it, but overall not a bad saw. Um, I kind of like it. I want to work with it a little bit. Um, I'm not overly thrilled with it though. I'd rather get a good silky, silky saw any day of the week. It goes in meh. They put a value of that as $39.99. Again, it's Gerber. I understand it's going to be very overpriced. Uh, I don't know what we could find it for ordinarily. Last item we've got is the Bladio. Oh, we're back to the Bladio. Papagi, Papagio? Papagio. See, that's funny because I did a lot of training in Papago in Arizona. But Papagio lockback folder. And that comes in this little tube. And this, <laughs> so, all right. So how do you put, how do you put the, okay, 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 all right. So Bladio, the one with 895 goes in the ultimate box. Bladio, the 1399 goes in the basic plus. Make that make sense. Okay, whatever. All right. I've never really been big on knives that come in tubes. But let's see what we got. Does this have any kind of information in there? Come out. It says 420, uh, 420 stainless steel. But are you going to tell us what kind of 420? Made in China. Oh, that one says it. Um, so what exactly is this? I swear I've seen this before. I swear I've seen this knife before. I just couldn't tell you where. And it's this rubberized guard on the lock back that's... This is a cheap-ass knife. Not gonna lie. Yeah, this cutting money's gotten a little moist and humid sitting around on the ground there, and I shouldn't have let it do that. So let's get another one and give it a real good test. Yeah, on a nice dry piece of paper. It does have a little bit of a burr though. Right around there, I can feel it. I'll do that again because I skirted around it a couple times. Okay, that's not bad. And the pull through mm, leverage issue, but very clean cut. Um, very cheap. I, I can't remember where I've seen this before, but it was years ago and didn't have their name on it then. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty cheap knife. It's very off center. Um, the grip is nice. It's a rubbery grip. I have to give it that. But could you, if you had to? Ooh, finger guillotine almost. But I was just checking if you could do this one handed. So. <sighs> I'm, I'm betting this is just straight up 420 nothing. 420 crap steel. Great practice in sharpening. But this has to this has to be a This has gotta be a this has gotta be a don't like it knife. Um It's just the fit and finish looks crappy. Even even the, the stamping on the name looks uneven in the pressure. Um weird staining on the blade I don't know but on the other hand tackle box glove compartment great practice for sharpening but no it, it goes in the I don't like it pile so the thing is the items that I like I like I like that like I really like the ones that I like the ones that are meh are really meh they're you know I'm curious about them but there's there's nothing that just jumps out and tells me like they're really likable items. They're like, they're curiosities to me. And the ones I don't like, I just really don't like. Like, I really don't like them. The funny part is, one, two, well, three, four, okay? But these are like the same thing. One, two, three, and one, two, three. It's almost an even split throughout the box. Almost. That's kind of funny. But surprisingly, 
There is just that much more, just that one extra like it over the don't like it or the man. So that's weird. This box has some crazy stuff still. I don't know. So what are you guys thinking? What do you like in this box and what don't you like in this box? And do you agree or disagree with my split among things? Um, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. And I really am curious to hear what some um, more authoritative saw people than me think about the steel and the issues, you know, what we discussed. Corrosion resistance, toughness versus edge retention in, in a saw versus, you know, a knife blade. When we talk about the uh, 4116 steel. Please, I'm very curious to know what, you know, you, you saw experts think about that. So anyway, thanks again, Jason. Thanks again, all of you guys. Please do check out Doc P Tactics Talk. I'm trying to get that channel off the ground. I really think some of you guys will really enjoy the way I'm presenting some of the information in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a good old time. Remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.